All right, Renee asks, Nabil and David, when you start talking to our Muslim friends about Jesus, what is the first point you try to get across to them? And uh, you might want to answer the follow-up quickly. Quickly, uh, he asked Nabil, how are you feeling? So you want to say how you're feeling and then go after the question. How I'm feeling? Uh, thanks for asking, Renee. Um, yeah, I'm uh, very thankful that the chemotherapy has been going well. Um, the first round was really bad, but every round since has been pretty good. Stomach's kind of bothering me, but uh, trust the Lord for, for healing. Uh, regarding talking to Muslims about Jesus, what's the first point I bring up? I mean, if the conversation's already about Jesus, um, what I would bring up is that I'm not saying Jesus is another God. Um, I don't believe that there are multiple gods. I believe that there is one God. Uh, that's the very first point I try to establish with Muslims, is the belief of monotheism. Um, Muslims just don't get how Christianity could be monotheistic. And so I point out that you have one God who's entered into the world many times. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, he, he's shown up. He's met with Abraham. He's met with uh, Moses. He's, he's met with Jacob. He's dined with the elders of Israel. He's shown up as uh, a pillar of fire and a, and a pillar of cloud. Um, he leads Israel through the desert like that. He walked in the garden with Adam and Eve. So God shows up a lot in the Bible, and then he promises to enter into the world um, in Isaiah um, chapter 7 and chapter 9. And of course, Malachi, the very last book of the Bible, also shows that God is talking about entering into the world. The very last thing the Old Testament says is, um, I will send Elijah before I come. Um, and so, what do you have? You have John the Baptist coming, and then Jesus is the fulfillment of God coming into the world. So, that's that's the first point I want to make. Muslims don't believe that God comes into the world. The Quran is very clear about that, that Allah remains behind a veil, as if it were, and it's not appropriate for Allah to reveal himself to people except through a messenger or through an angel. Or occasionally through a fire. But it didn't say that in that verse. But yeah, um, Moses speaks to God in the fire um, in two separate places in the Quran. Um, so that's the background point that I like to make to a Muslim who just can't believe God would ever enter into the world. I say, look, this is what Jews always taught. Uh, it's it's only Islam that teaches something else. Um, I just jump in there with a bit more on that. Yep, that's yep. okay. I have... uh, then another question was directed towards David and Nabil. Oh, Although right. she didn't know you were going to be in the car, so, all right, go ahead. Go ahead, If, if she didn't know, I'm sure she would. Um, so <laughs> Nabil quotes from Malachi 3, 1, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. I just wanted to quote um, the rest of that verse, which is interesting, interesting too. And the Lord whom you see will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. So I think there, there is this idea, again, in Malachi, that the Lord himself is going to come down. Um, and just to add a little bit more about the concept of, of God's interaction with the world in the Old Testament to show that this isn't just a Christian innovation. Uh, so us guys here, we've actually been at the ETS, the Evangelical Theological Seminary, and they were talking about a, a Jewish scholar earlier on, Benjamin Summer. Uh, I gather that in his book, The Bodies of God, he actually talks about kind of fluidity within the divine personhood, and he actually believes that Trinitarian theology is quite consistent with the Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament. That's all I wanted to say. Well, and he's not the first to say that. Sure, you know sure. that there are Orthodox Jews who argue. Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, this is Benjamin Summer. No, no, the I, guy that I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not sure because I sent you the link a while ago. Didn't I? Uh, uh, I sure. can't remember the guy's name I'm talking about. There's one named Alan Siegel, um, who's a Jew, uh, who, who said Jews at the time of Jesus often believed that God had multiple persons. Um, and then you have other Jews who argue the same thing. Um, by the way, that reference to Malachi 3.1 is exactly what Mark starts his gospel with. Uh, a reference to Malachi 3.1 mixed with Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3. When he says John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus, he refers to two verses where God himself was going to enter into the world. Uh, so that's how I begin, the same way Mark begins. Yeah, when I... Uh... When I'm talking to a Muslim, it, it's kind of it's going to depend on on the Muslim and what 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 sort of claims he's making. But the general ideas that I'm trying to get across are uh, one that our Muslim friends are required to believe what Jesus says, 
Uh, two, we happen to know a lot historically about what Jesus says. And so we have a kind of check on our religious claims. So on those areas where Christianity and Islam teach different things about Jesus, we actually can go back to the first century and see which claims line up with what we know about, uh, about Jesus and his disciples. And so this isn't just, hey, whatever you happen to believe about Jesus is fine. Uh, we actually can investigate to see where the truth lies. And uh, the uh, one more point is that the Quran never says one critical word of the texts that we have and the texts that we use to learn about Jesus. And so when Muslims are saying that our texts are corrupt because they say something different, they've got a problem because their texts... If, if, the, if the Bible's been corrupted, Allah just doesn't seem to know it. And so, so the, all of this ultimately leads to the real point I'd like to get across, which is that the Muslim position is incoherent. You can't make sense of it. Uh, and the, the, the video I put out recently, um, uh, what Islam really teaches about God and Jesus, really, uh, I, I try to get to the heart of this matter, that if you line up, all the things Islam claims about Jesus, you just can't make sense of them historically or theologically. And uh, that's what I ultimately want to get across. Now, can you do that in, in, a, in a quick conversation or two minutes or something like this? Uh, maybe not. But, you know, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're talking about our, our Muslim friends, uh, you do have the opportunity to share those kinds of things. And so uh, that's what I'd like to get across.